But in the end, it is about your relationship to yourself as your relationship to money. And all we're really looking for, because we have the same question, whether we speak it out loud or not, is we're asking, am I lovable? That's the question. And once we know the answer, money will be a byproduct of everything we are and how we show up. So I don't trade options because options are win-lose bull. They are. One person wins, one person loses. I'm not in a zero-sum game world. I once was at a course and there was an options trader sitting next to me and my wife was just grabbing my knee because I was like, so what value do you provide? She goes, I can work from the beach or anywhere I want. I'm like, yeah, but what value does it provide in the world? It's like, well, it doesn't provide value. So why not be in the value creation game? There's too much pain in the world. There's too many people that are struggling and there's too many brilliant people that are doing things because it's easy, not because it's worth it. So three-dimensional investing is you relate to that. So instead of risk, uh, taking high risk, this is about risk management. Like due diligence and finance is like Sasquatch. You hear about it all the time, but you've never seen it. You know what I'm saying? The key is you want someone on the side, the same side of the table that's not selling you something to sit down and help you mitigate risk. Like when Scott and I worked together, I sold him zero products. We sat down. I said, how do we plug leaks? That was the first thing. We plug leaks by what time? You know, five minutes in, how much were the leaks that we plugged? Three million bucks, right? The rest of the day was pretty easy for Scott. I could do no wrong. <laughs> We were popping the wine. I think it was like 3.30. We were celebrating and having wine. But the key is most people have grown in their business. They know they need a better team in their business, but they don't have the team in their finances. Because the person that started with you probably doesn't belong with you today because you've outgrown them and you are friends or you have a relationship. And you know what? I've had people let go of, family members that were CPAs and they're like, they felt relieved. Not all the time. They might be able to be part of the team, but they're not the team anymore. You've got to get a second opinion. What's not working. What is working? What, what's broken? Because this is money that can go right into your pocket, less risk in your life. You don't have to go save a bunch more money. If you plug those leaks, you can put it back in your business, your quality of life or your investments, but economic independence is where you have enough cash flow from assets to cover your expenses. Think about it. Most people are living this life where they're saving 10% of their income to chase a 10% rate of return to wait for 30 years for it to work out. That is dogmatic. It's slow. It's dangerous. Taki said I would be funny. I'm just intense. That's what you get today. I'm just, this is the intense version because I'm like, you know, wanting to make sure this gets through. But that whole notion of wait 30 years, I want you to get there in 10 years or less. And economic independence, think about it. If you have your assets creating enough cash flow to cover your basic expenses, every active dollar you earn can build more assets now. I know everybody talks about 10x. I'm gonna start talking about 10.3x. I don't know, just you know, to be different. But like this is literally a 10x strategy because no longer are you just saving 10% of your income. When you're economically independent, you can save 100% into new assets, creating more cash flow, improving your lifestyle not waiting for 30 years. And guess what happens when you're financially independent? You can swing for the fences in your vision, knowing that your kids are going to go to the same schools, you're going to eat the same food, you're going to drive the same vehicles, you're going to have the same house, which means if you married someone that has a different money persona than you, which is the universe's joke to say, this is how attraction works, that all of a sudden, there's a different level of support. I mean, can you imagine I'm in my 40s? And I'm like, babe, I want to do comedy. And she's like, I just don't think you're as funny as you think you are. It's like, that really hurts. Uh, and then she reminds me of this time we went to a formal financial function and I drank too much tequila and I went up on stage and made an ass out of myself. People were laughing more at me, none of my jokes. She left the room embarrassed. And I was like, but people laugh all the time. She's like, you're making them money. They're being kind. <laughs> but you know what? We're financially independent. So she's like, why don't you try it? She sat in the front row, white knuckled the whole time. But it's really her fault. She once said, you're kind of funny. I translate it as your comedic God. That's how I heard it. That's how I heard it, you know? But then I could say, well, it's okay to have a hobby. It's okay to invest in my quality of life. It's okay to spend a summer in Italy. It's okay to do the things everybody's waiting for one day, someday along the way, because I'm financially independent. So why not live a better life? What would it take for you to live the life you, you love? What would it take to create the life you never want to retire from? 
To me, it comes down to this. Vision is the win. Value is the way. Dollars are the byproduct and prosperity becomes your state of being. That's the formula. The formula is it's not high risk equals high return. It's create cash flow to become economically independent. That should happen in 10 years. It's mitigate risk. It's invest in things you understand in either business, IP, real estate, or a combination of the three. Don't invest in things you don't know. Focus instead of diversify, because diversification is the strategy for the uber wealthy to store their assets. While you're becoming wealthy, focus on your business, grow it substantially, and transfer that to personal wealth in a risk-free fashion that you capitalize that money and you can utilize it when necessary. See, like... Malcolm Gladwell wrote this article in The New Yorker, and he was talking about the wealthiest people sat in cash for long periods of time, and they pounced when everybody else was in distress, because now they could provide liquidity and capital when everybody else was losing. So if you're sitting in a portfolio, and interest rates go up, and your money's going down, if you cash out, that's a guaranteed loss. But if you've got access to capital, this is the time to buy a business. This is the time to buy the real estate that you want to buy. And distress is already here and been well on its way. So the question is, will you be a leader or will you be complaining about the structure and situation at hand? Wealth is built through a conversation. What conversations are you having? That's what it comes down to. And are you committed to those conversations? Because what all vision really is, is for the person who's bold enough to speak it into existence. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to plant a seed of hope, connection, and expression in the hearts of a billion people using entertainment to educate to help restore love to humanity and heal our wounds with money. A billion people, I don't know how to get there, but I'm speaking into existence. I'm committed to it. I'm here today for it. I'm writing books around it. My life, I, I'm going to go until I can't go anymore because all I know is by the third month in Italy, I was like, another four hour dinner? Are you kidding me? Can we just go do something else? What is it going to take to get our bill? Like, I like a little bit of like coming back into value creation again, you know? So if, you're, if you take a break and you don't want to come back to what you have, maybe you don't have the right business. Maybe you're not doing the things that you enjoy. If you think that retirement sounds like a good thing, maybe you're like my dad and you're a coal miner. That was a good idea. You know, like my dad deserved, my dad earned Labor Day. You know what I'm saying? He deserved to rest his broken mining skeleton in his black lung. Like that's hard work. Kids today don't labor. They don't deserve Labor Day. Working at Jamba Juice, you shouldn't get Labor Day off. Driving people around in Uber, please. Like that's reserved for construction workers, sanitation people, and Al Waroker's personal trainer. That's labor. You know what I'm saying? So you got the old portfolio or you got the new portfolio. You've got wealth being on your terms, you designing the game, you enjoying life along the way, or letting someone else tell you it's one day, someday. Just hand your money over because it's too complicated. Scrimp, save, sacrifice, and budget. Like all these things create constraint in you as a human limit your ability to grow your business, require far too much time and energy in the mind. And ultimately what happens is when people lose in bad investments, it's not just the loss of the money, it's the loss of sleep, it's the frustration because you knew what it took to get there and the harm that you've done to yourself and your family and your legacy. Because most people don't think about legacy until it's too late. They think about legacy when they already have a tax problem. They think about legacy when they've already destroyed so much because they've neglected everything that was important along the way to check that box and get that stupid award that doesn't even matter. And then all the time has to go back to repair everything that was broken because we were addicted to something that was a false promise of we're going to be prosperous when our net worth hits a certain amount. Forget about net worth, focus on cash flow. Forget about one day, someday, enjoy the process along the way. Create the life you don't want to retire from, build the life that you love. And when you find the work that's worth doing, you've already won. So I just came out with a book called Money Unmasked. Money Unmasked is about the four money personas and understanding the shadow side of the persona and the winning side. The shadow side comes when we're in isolation, when we're in scarcity, and when we think we have to do too much on our own. When we think we have to do everything on our own or by ourselves, we limit our prosperity and we destroy collaboration because we get stuck in competition or envy and scarcity. On the flip side, there's the winning persona. If you find the winning personas that you are not, then it's about co-creation, collaboration, and expansion, because vision should not be something you can accomplish on your own. If you accomplish on your own, that's a goal or an objective, not a vision. If you are inspired by your vision, which is the rarest commodity in the world, it will tell your brain what's important and what to pay attention to. And people are looking for vision so badly 
because they want to be led. They want to be part of something that's big. Like when the Wright brothers proclaimed, if birds can glide for long periods of time, why can't we? Or when Malala started an international movement for human rights, bringing access to education in the Middle East, it's now gone throughout the world. Even a bullet couldn't stop her. Vision is things that people want to be a part of and around because it's an energy that breathes life and a world that feels like it's dark and lifeless. And entrepreneurs are going to be the ones that have to bring about this vision because everybody else is indoctrinated to follow the rules, trade time for money, get into consumer debt, and then wait for 30 years so they could finally enjoy life. I'm here to say it's time to buck that system. So when you know your money persona, you're going to see both what is the dark things or the things that would put you off track that are subconsciously sabotaging you, or what are the things that are going to help you leverage your best skill sets and be able to do more. Understanding that for you, your spouse, and anyone you work with will be instrumental. So you can use the, it's a quiz that anyone can take, and then you could learn from. So that's in the book. You want to learn where you're, how to recover cash? There's chapters on that. You want to learn how to profit from your ideas up front? There's chapters on that. But in the end, it is about your relationship to yourself is your relationship to money. And all we're really looking for, because we have the same question, whether we speak it out loud or not, is we're asking, am I lovable? That's the question. And once we know the answer, money will be a byproduct of everything we are and how we show up. Because life becomes more about flow. It becomes a lot less effortless. It's not what we could prove but it's how we live. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.